start. Okay, so for the benefit uh, of people that will be following along our uh, discussion in YouTube, uh, this is the Alpha for ds uh, online learning community. So, and today I'll be presenting chapter 26 of the Alpha for Data Science book, which is about function. Uh, so for the learning objective, what we're going to cover today, we are going to learn about three useful type of functions. So we are going to look at uh, the vector function that take one or more vectors as inputs and return a vector as also outputs. And uh, we are going to learn about data frame function that take a data frame as inputs and return also a data frame as outputs. We are also going to look at plot functions that take a data frame as inputs and return a plot as output. So th those are the three uh, objective in which uh, we'll be trying to cover uh, in uh, today's uh, discussion. So feel free to interrupt me at any point, maybe if, if there is anything that is not uh, clear so that I can address it. Uh, so for the prerequisite uh, for this chapter, we'll be looking at, we have to have the IDVS and also the NYC flight uh, 13 uh, data set. So we need to install the package so that we can have access uh, to the function. So mainly uh, this for the introduction part of this, uh, talk about uh, automating, uh, automation, talk about automation. Uh, because for you to be a more effective analyst or data scientist, you need to learn how to automate a lot of tasks. Let's say, for instance, uh, uh, you you want to fit like 300 models, so we, we can't just be writing model one, model two to model 300. We need to look for uh, a more efficient way in which we can do it, uh, achieve uh, this task. So that is mainly what they talk about uh, in this chapter and for this automation for us to be able to automate uh, these tasks uh, we need to learn uh, how to write uh, functions so basically functions are in R are broken down into three parts whereby the first thing we need to think of when we want to write a function is that we need to give our function what is going to be the name uh, of the function in which we want to create. And they did discuss that uh, we should try as much as possible and ensure uh, we use verbs, uh, more verbs that, it, that is very easy for people to understand as the name of the function. So after giving the function a name, the next thing uh, we need to look at is that what is going to be the argument of those functions. So what are going to be the arguments? That is the argument in which the argument can be data, it can be different variables, so we need to specify the argument. So the next thing is for us to think of is about, uh, is the body of the function, that is where we write uh, the actual R code in which we want to use uh, in implementing our task. So uh, they did explain here that it is safer, it is safer than copy and paste, you won't replicate error, which may I agree with them. Because if you keep on copying code from different block and paste, there, is a ch there are chances in which you can make error and it's going to be very difficult for you to trace where that error is. But if you're writing a function, it's very easy because your eye, your, all your attention will be focused in one place because you can easily see, oh, this at uh, this line, I make error here, you can easily fix uh, that error. Because it, at, at, according to us, early explained in the book that it takes uh, years of experience for you to write great code that work the first time. So it takes years of experience. So, so that is basically what I have uh, for the introduction. So for the next part, okay, they say when and how to write a function. So just as I said that if you copy a code, if you copy and paste, a block of code more than two times, uh, it is better we write a function because that is what they discuss in the book as dry principle, which is don't repeat yourself. So if you copy a block of code and you paste more than two times in your script, in that case, you need to write a function to automate uh, that task. So just as I explained, a function need to have a name. 
and this name, we need to ensure that we make it to be clear and very descriptive, simple for others to understand. Then the next thing is the arguments. What will be the arguments? And all the arguments, they are going to go in here. Those are the arguments of a function. The next thing is going to be the code, uh, which is the code will go inside uh, this brace. So I can just, let's take for an example. Let me go, let, let's see for an example. Let's see uh, one of one function that it comes uh, with a given package. So let's say I say library uh, tidyverse. So okay, so this is tidyverse. So I want to check the function filter. So if I press F two in my keyboard, it's going to step into the function definition. So this is the function definition of filter. The name of the function is filter. Then these are the arguments that is going to go into the function. We have dot data, dot, 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 which means that additional arguments uh, can still go into the function. We have dot by, which is set to not, dot preserve, which is false. So these are all, this is the body of the function where we write uh, the actual code that is going to do the filtering for us. Uh, uh, and we are going to name that as filter. So that is uh, the logic. So once we just type the function, we press F2, we are going to step into the function uh, definition. Then we can now see, uh, so then check, they now say the check function with a few inputs to make sure it is working. That is if you are writing a function, maybe in a package, uh, we need to do testing. So. Yep. Um, and, and that fun, that filter function is that the filter function that's in the package already it's not one that you've written and given that name the, the filter function is a function that is in the package already yep. that is filter uh deployer so but there are some other generic function that come with r let's say mean let's say mean i think this is a generic function yeah. Let's say we mean, you can see function x dot dot dot, then use method, which is mean. This is a okay. this is a function that is built in R, but we can also extend it and write our own uh, function in that case. So this is an inbuilt function. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So where am I? So the in this part, they talk about come. Functions are for computers and humans. So what what are the, what is that lead? What are they trying to say that when we are writing function, we should make everything simple. We should give it a good name. And when we are naming this function, they do recommend we can use either the snake case or the camel camel case in naming this function. So we need to give it a good name in which someone can see this function uh, and really. Uh, what we are trying uh, to say, we need to give it either snake case or camel case, just as they explain in the book. Though there are some packages in which we want to give name our function a specific name, but that name might already exist in another package. So we need to be very uh, explicit when we want to use such function. And they do advise that when we want to name our function, uh, we should not name uh, they give it a name that is already uh, in, in base R already, because at, in, at that point, uh, there might be some kind of, uh, to avoid conflict. So it is better we give it a good name. And if in such case, because there are some time, at times I might be running a code, uh, maybe I deploy R, it has a function called filter. I think stats also have a function called filter. So at times, there might be conflicts. So in that case, it's good we should use the namespacing to call that function. Where we say filter, column, column, then deploy column, column, filter, then we now pass in uh, the function to avoid uh, that uh, conflict uh, when, we were, when we are writing uh, a code. So, so for the next part, uh, okay, they talk about, they do talk about comments. So comments is also very good when we are writing code. It's better we comment our code because when we put comments, we are trying to explain what the code is doing. Maybe we can come over to that same script 
uh, maybe two weeks time. So once we open the scheme, we really understand uh, what the code is doing. So they do advise that it's better we also with comments on our code when we are programming. So this other, this part is about the first part, which is we'll be looking at the vector function. So example, uh, we have a vector, which is DF, which is a table. And table is just like our normal uh, data frame, but it's a more uh, a improved data frame because it has more features. So we have A, which we are, we are take, taking an R norm, which is a random number that will have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. R norm of five, we say we have B, which is R norm of five. We have C, which is R norm of five. And we also have D, which is R norm five. So this is, this is a vector in which we are creating, but we now have DF. We said mutate A uh, is equals to A minus minimum of A, NA or RM equals true that if there's any missing data, drop it and compute the minimum value all over maximum A, and it or RM is true. So this code, they, were, they keep on doing this. They come to B, uh, they do the same thing. They come down to C, uh, they do the same thing and they come down to D, they do the same thing. So I want to, you to look at this code. Who can point out the error in this code? Uh, well, it's repeating the same step more than twice. Yes, it's repeating the same step more than twice by copying the block of code and paste. And if you check here, hardly they made a mistake here. They were supposed to put B here, but they made mis they did a mistake and they put A. So we have seen that is always very bad attitude when programming. If you copy the same step more than two times, it's a bad, they do explain that it's a bad attitude. In that case, we need to think of writing a function uh, to implement that task. So because they made that, they made that mistake, and this is the uh, return value in which uh, they got in that case. So how do we solve this problem? So for us to solve this problem, uh, we need to think of uh, writing a function in which we can use to, to address uh, this problem. So in this part, they talk about writing a writing function. So they just split everything into a single line. So for A, we have A minus minimum of A, N A or R M equals true all of our maximum of A N A or R M equals to minus a minimum of A N A or R M equals true. So they also put this in the another line. Uh, they also put this in a separate line and also this in a separate line. So when we now extract all, when we now extract all these terms that are common, we now discover we now have something like this. Okay, for us to fill in something, for us to fill in something here, we are going to fill in something here, we are going to fill in something here. So, and when we are thinking about uh, this function, what this function actually does is that this function, it rescale uh, the value, our values of the DF to lie between uh, zero and one. So, since we know that this function is trying to rescale value that lies between zero and one, First thing we need to think of, we need to give it a name. So we need to name our function. In that case, uh, they name the function as uh, rescale 01 because the function is rescaling a number to lie between uh, zero and one. So the next thing after naming the function is we need to think about what will be the arguments that are going into the function. So for us to know the argument, that is going into the function, we need to look at, extract out those common terms. So here we have A, we have A, we have A, we have A. So we can say that arguments can be X. We can choose X or we can also choose A also to be the argument. So in that case, the call function and the argument is only one, since it is only one argument that is going into the function, we name that argument as X. So the next line will now be the body of the function because I say a function has three things in, which is very important. The name, which is rescale zero one. Then we have function. So the argument is X. So now this is the body where we now put the actual code. We just copy that block of code that we have here. 
and we put it in the body of the function. And we make sure as we open a coli brace, we need to close it back with a coli brace. So this is a function. So when we execute this, so let's take, let's see how this function work in our studio. Let's see the function. So this is the function, okay? The function is there. So if you are not sure, there are some other way we can say, we can check for arguments of the name is rescale 01. Okay, we can see that this is the argument of the function. It takes only one argument. So we can also check for body, uh, body of the function, sorry, body, body of the function. The function is rescale 01. So we can see that this is the body of the function. This is what the body you can see. I've extracted this is the body of the function. So we have seen the arguments. So the next thing, when we have created our function, they do explain, we need to test to see how this function is actually working. We need to test our function. So this is a function. We can see that we scale zero one is a function, but this function only reside in my global environment. This function can be found where in my global environment. If I check my global environment, I see I have a function and that function is called rescale 01. So there is another function here. So this function is rescale 01 and it only takes one argument. So if I say rescale 01, it's going to add me for X. So I can give it a vector of what C minus 10, zero, and then, so I give it a vector. So we can see that this function is doing, is returning uh, what I did expect it to return because the function is rescaling our number to lie between zero and one. We can see that this function is giving us our expected uh, return value. So we can also test the function with this value. We can see we still have this, this, it still lies between a uh, zero and one. We can also do this uh, within mutates, whereby we have DF and then we say mutate A, which is we scale zero one A. We also have B, we scale zero one B, we have C, we scale zero one C, we have D, we scale zero one D. But the more efficient way of doing this is uh, using the D plier across, which we will see because it's for us to use D plier across function, we, we can say DF and then mutate across. Then we specify that the dot cause should be between A to D. Then the dot function is going to be a uh, rescale zero one. So what do I mean by that? So let's say, where's the DF? Where's the DF? Where's the DF data frame? Um, Is it? I wanted to show where is it? Yeah, this is it. So I can copy this back to our studio. Okay. So that I have it in my environment. So what I mean is that we can say we have DF and then we say mutates, mutates across, then dots dot cause is equals to C, which will be A to D, then dots FNS is equals to rescale, rescale zero one. So we can also do this, which is a more efficient way than because when the main goal of the, uh, this is for us to improve our, our workflow, we can also write it in this way. I can format this code, Okay, we can write it in this way, which is a like two liner, which is a more efficient way rather than we saying, rather than we writing uh, the code this way, uh, just as they explained in the book, because here they were having DF, mutate A, 
can see we have in three lines, this is four line, this is five line, this is six line. So we can use just two line and we have achieved uh, the same uh, results. So this other part, what is it doing? This is a function and this function, we want to, we want to use this function to strip out all the percent signs all the commas and also all the dollars. So I think Adley got this idea when he posted this about this chapter on, on Twitter. So I think this is a this is a link to the Twitter uh, page where you can see follow along the discussion where they got the idea uh, they use. Yeah. So we have clean number, which is a function, and this function is taking one argument. So this is the body of the function. So in the body of the function. They say str detects, which is from the string r. So within x, so when they are percentage, okay, we need to store it as is a percentage. We store it in a new object. Then we have number, uh, all x, we assign it to a number. Then we say str remove all. So it's going to remove all the percentage that we have in is percentage, we strip it off. Then we have str remove all which is comma, this str remove all is still a string r function. And then we said str remove all fixed uh, dollar. So where we have fixed a dollar, uh, we want to strip it off. And then we say as dot numeric, we convert the x back to numeric. Then we now say if else is percentage. So if it's actually a percentage, we need to be to be number all over 100 otherwise leave it as number. So when we now test the function, because the function name is clean number. So we now say clean number, we pass it, uh, this uh, is going to give us the return value, which is uh, one, two, three, zero, zero, zero. We also test clean number, we pass it this, so it returns uh, 0 0.45, but I think the read r pass underscore number function can also, we can also use it uh, to tell, uh, to achieve uh, because it's what's going to return uh, the number. So at this point, before I proceed, I don't know uh, if there are any questions uh, before we go further. That mutate across um, that you showed us, is that in the book or is that just something you've added in? No, it's not in the book. It's not in the book, but they did discuss in the book that uh, it's going to be more efficient if we can use across to achieve uh, the result rather than we uh, copying and pasting. Yeah. If it, they say it's going to be very efficient if we can use across, because you can see uh, with across, uh, we are able to, to reduce those code to just two lines of code rather than we having six lines of code. Yeah, no, that looks really nice, good. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so we have looked at the vector function. So now we are going over to data frame function. So uh, they do explain that when we, uh, when uh, you notice copying and pasting multiple verbs, multiple times, you might think about writing a data frame. Uh, we might think about writing a data frame a function, maybe we are having an object, we want to do some summary statistics, and we want to be repeating this for over and over for several variables. So we need to think about writing a data frame function. So, and this data frame function uh, is going to take us into the chapter about tidy evaluation because uh, we need to be using the embracing coli coli. So I think that is what we'll see here. So in this data frame function, We'll be looking at in direction and tidy evaluation. So here we have a, a function name which is name group main. And this function is taking how many arguments? One, which is df. The second argument is group var, and the third argument is group mean var. So in the body of the function, we have df, which is data frame, and then we are grouping by group var, and then we are summarizing mean, which is mean var, okay? So, but this is a function. This is a function in which uh, we have written. But when we want to test this function out in real life to see how we can use this function uh, to solve problems. So we now have a data set, which is diamonds. 
and then we use the group pin. We pass in cut, cut, which is for group var. We pass in characters, which is for main var. Okay. So when we pass in this into the function, the R is going to throw an error. Same as group by variable found in dot data. Group var is not found because we are grouping by main var, group var. So R is going to look across the environment, is going to think where can we find group var or main var in DF. R cannot find it. So R is going to throw an error in that case. So for us to solve this problem, we need to use the one of the concepts that is in what tidy evaluation, which is embracing. So that is what uh, we are going to see here. So for example, they did a, an example here. We have DF, uh, which is table, main var is one, uh, group var is G, group is one, X is 10, and Y is 100. So, so here they now say DF, and then they say group main, uh, group main, so it's group and group, this is for the group and this is for the main. So when they did this, uh, this one work. It works, it return G and also it return one because uh, we are using a data frame in which R knows where, where those value of group because group is in DF, R can find group in DF, R can find X in DF. So this one worked. But if you check this other one, uh, we were using group main and group main has three arguments. So here we have DF and we have this, but when we now use a new data set, we pass in the function, we pass in this argument, R cannot find uh, cut and carrot. It cannot link this to our function in which uh, we define here. So I would throw an error, but how do we avoid this thing to occur? How do we solve uh, this problem? We need to use uh, the concept of tidy evaluation because it, the initial problem we have is that we have DF, we have group by group var. So I need to say group var in DF. So how do we tell R to pick group var from the data in which we are passing in? So that is where we need to use this concept called embracing, where we are going to embrace it in coli coli. This coli coli brace. There is also a bang bang operator, which is, uh, but in this case, we look at the coli coli brace just as what they discuss in the book. So these are the arguments that is going to the function. Uh, this is the function name. This is the body of the function. So for the group by, we just say group var, we embrace group var in coli coli brace. Then we summarize main. Then we also use main var, we embrace it with coli coli. So, but now if we now test this function, df, group main, group, and x, we can see that it will work. If we still test this function, if we test this function, uh, let's take this to our studio, we'll test the function uh, with our initial example. Uh, test this, this is it. So let's grab that first example that throws an error where we use diamond. Okay, so we use this. This is a function. So here we have diamond and then group by group main. And then, and then group main, if we test this, we can see that the function is working as we use the uh, embracing operator. So we can see that what we specify is working. So, but R is still putting mean here, but we will see later on in our discussion how we are going to tell, uh, how we are going to use another operator to derive, to retrieve the name from the data frame in which we are passing. And we'll see that as we proceed in the discussion. I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed. No, that's fine. Okay. So where are we? Okay, so we are through with this. So next, when to embrace. So they were talking about when to embrace. So we only embrace when we are using data maxing. 
functions such that when we are using arrange, we are using filter, and we are also using summarize. So when we are using arrange, filter, and summarize, it's always good for we can pass in our embracing for those uh, variables. We can embrace those variables. But when we are using tidy selection, this is used for function like select, relocate, and rename that select a variable. So in that case, there is a new argument in which they introduce in the book, which is like pick. They introduce pick. I think they were trying to do an example here. Uh, they were trying to do an example here. I did not put it in the notes where they showed pick, how to use pick. Let's see. Let's see that. Date function. Yep. Yep. Last year, we were trying to do one example with big last year flatten. We have done this. Oh. That, yeah, we are here. Yeah. Yep, I think it's around here. Where is it? Okay. Uh, oh. Okay. Like count missing. So yeah, they group by. So group vars. But if you if you did not put pick here, because we need to specify that we want it to pick this group var from the DF. It should rather refer to BF to pick the group var. So when we're now passing flights, we say crown missing, we pass in these uh, variables in which we want to group by so that it will now retrieve this from the actual data frame in which we are passing in. So that was what uh, they were trying uh, to talk about here in the tidy selection principle that is always good uh, we think about uh, when uh, uh, to embrace. So I think uh, the more advanced concept about this is can be found in the advanced uh, book. Uh, so like uh, common use cases, maybe in terms of like in our data analysis, data wrangling process, uh, we want to uh, we want to perform a lot of computation where we will have some mini compute summary statistics like minimum, mean, median, max, counts, number of missing values. So in that case, uh, we can wrap everything up in a function. And this function is taking two arguments, which is the data and also the variable uh, in which we want to use to do our computation. So we can say data and then summarize mean is equals to mean var. Any that are equals true, so we can wrap everything up in a function which we call the function as summary six. So we can now say diamonds and then summary six. So we pass in the data which is carat. So it's just uh, going to give us uh, the summary statistics: minimum, mean, median, max, uh, the counts, and also the number of missing uh, data. So we can also have diamonds and then group by cut. And then summary six carat, so it's still going to give us uh, uh, this uh, output. Okay, so the last part uh, in the discussion is about plot function. I think this one is very useful when maybe we want we will be creating a bunch of plots, so it's better we wrap it in a function. So in this function, it's only giving us output for a histogram. So this is a function, and it's taking three arguments. We have the DF, which is a data frame, the variable, and also the bin width, we set it uh, to null. Uh, and for the arguments, we have DF and then ggplot2, aesthetics, x is also, we embrace the variable plus uh, geom histogram, bin width is equals to bin width. So if we run this, we have gotten a new function in our environment. So we can say diamonds and then histogram, then the variable, should be carat and the bin width is 0 0.1. So when we do that, uh, we are going to get uh, this output. This is a ggplot2 object. We can further customize it. We can add several other layers uh, to this same output. So we can add 
several layer we can label the x axis we can label uh, the uh, the y axis so we can do a lot of customization because our function is still returning a ggplot2 object so we can do a lot of customization uh, to uh, to improve uh, the function so the last uh, is when we have uh, more variables when we have more variables uh, we can check for maybe a linearity check with this one is a function we have a data frame uh, we have some other arguments for x and y so we have our data frame we say ggplot2 aesthetics x uh, we embrace the x y uh, we embrace the y we say jump points uh, we said uh, here we have jump smooth method is lowest lowest smoothing formula which is a formula the way have color is red standard error we say false we also have another jump smooth for the linear model so this is for linearity check so when we check this with star wars and then filter mass that is less than 1000 and then linearity check where x is mass y is uh, height so when we plot this we can see uh, with that within the go with our function in which we have written, uh, we have been able to visualize this. It still returns uh, a ggplot2 object. We can add several other layers uh, to this. We can change so many things uh, on this visualization using the same syntax as we know in ggplot2 because our result is still a ggplot2 uh, output. So we can also do the same thing for bar plots. Uh, where we can, uh, uh, and these bar plots, uh, we are introducing a new concept here. So this function is sorted bars. We have a function that takes a data frame and also a variable. Here we say DF and then we say mutate uh, variable. We're now having a new concept where we have two column and equals two because by right, by right R is not going to take in a name from a data frame. But here we are trying to see how we can retrieve the name that is coming from a data frame in which we are passing in. So in, for us to achieve uh, that, we need to use uh, this new, this concept where we have column and equals to, so that we want R to pick the name that is coming from var. That is what we are passing into the var. That is what we need R to retain that name. Then we say FCT reverse, FCT in frequency, there is reverse it and put it in a uh, decreasing order. Then we pass in the var. Then we said, and then we pass this to ggplot2, where we say y is equals to, we embrace the var plus jump bar. So when we run this function, this function is for the sorted bar. Then we pass in diamonds and then sorted bars. Then we pass in clarity. So it's, we are going to have this because the var we are passing into the function, the var here is what, clarity. So we want to retain that name. That is why we, we need to use another concept. Equals semicolon and equals to, this is going to make sure that R, R, R retrieve the name that we are passing in from our data frame. It's because the name is now clarity. So we need to retrieve that name. So that is why we are using uh, that uh, concept. We can also have conditional bars where we have DF, we have condition and also variable. So here we have DF and then we filter. Within filter, uh, we pass in, uh, we pass in our condition. Then we go into the ggplot2. We are still embracing the variable. Okay, then jump bar. So if we run this, we pass this into the function conditional bars where we have cut good and also clarity cuts is equals to glued. Then we have, we visualize uh, the clarity. We are going to have uh, this. So I don't know, is there any questions before we proceed uh, to the last part? And so it's condition, is that, that's in the data set? Is condition in the data set? No, the condition is not in the data sets. The condition is in the arguments of the function okay. that we are, we are so creating. So when we now come to filter, we still pass the condition in as calling. Yeah. Okay. We pass it in as calling. So, and then 
we take it to ggplot2 so that when we now come to the actual, we say diamond and then conditional bar. So this is where we now say condition is equals to cut equals to good. So this, yeah. is where we, this is where the logic of the condition comes in. So after that, the next thing is the variable and the variable is equals to clarity. Yeah. Now so that's maybe, yeah, that's good, thanks. Maybe I will specify that in the real code so that if any other person is coming, going through the, uh, I will put it that, yeah, var is equals to clarity, condition is equals to cut equals to good, so that it will be easy for them to follow along. Before I push it back to GitHub, I will update the notes again. Okay, so, so what about uh, if you want to do labeling? Uh, when we want to label, like in terms of like the title of the plot, it will be very difficult. So we need to use uh, another concept to label. So here we have a histogram function that we have created already, which is a function. It takes three arguments. So, but we want to label. So in that case, we need to use Arlang, Arlang and glue. So within this Arlang and glue, anything we pass within the brace, poly poly, so it's going to pick it as a, a, a label. So we have a histogram of var. So it's a histogram of var. So we pass it in coli. Then with bin width, which is bin width. So this is the label. We have put it in a function. Then we have df. And then we say ggplot2, uh, x, we still embrace it with a var. Then we say histogram bin width is equal to bin width, then labs. Uh, we said, Title is equals to when we say title is equals uh, to label. So once we execute this, so a function has run. So we now say diamonds and then histogram. So we said uh, the variable is carats, then bin which is uh, 0 0.1. So we can see that we can we are able to place uh, that label uh, at the top of the visualization, which is shows that a histogram of carats uh, with bin width. 0.1, uh, which is uh, nice in that uh, in our outputs. So uh, to wrap up, this I uh, think uh, we have been able, we have seen, we have in this chapter we have learned how to write uh, functions. So and uh, we have seen that every functions we create, there is made up of three pieces in which we need to know the name of the function. Uh, after knowing the name of the function, uh, we need to know the various arguments uh, with which we want to pass into the function. And also we look at uh, the body of the function. And before we can know the arguments uh, that is going uh, in the function, we need to think about uh, what we want to solve. We need to look at the problem. What are those common terms? We need to extract those common terms out. And then we now pass it into the arguments uh, of the functions. We also look at three useful scenarios. And this useful scenarios, we look at how we can create a vector. We look at a vector a function. We look at how we can create a data frame and also how we can create a plot a function. Uh, but uh, to learn more uh, about this, uh, the, there are several uh, documentation in which I can put uh, it in the charts. Uh, this is uh, the Diplar uh, documentation, which is programming with uh, Diplar. Uh, we also have the tidy R uh, documentation, uh, which is uh, very uh, useful. That is programming with tidy R. We also have uh, data max skin. Uh, we need to learn about uh, data max skin. And also the last, they look at uh, programming uh, with ggplot2. And also they talk about the tidy verse. Uh, Thai guide uh, for, for, for us to follow because each function we are creating, we need to ensure uh, we are following uh, the tidyverse uh, principle, the principle. So I think uh, that is all I have uh, for this talk. I think the next chapter we will be going into advanced concept uh, where we're looking at iteration. We'll be looking at different type of function. We will look at the map functions, also the warp, which they are, which are alternative to the apply family of functions. So I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, no, no, that's good, thank you.
Okay, so I can just put stop in the charts.